Great. All right. Welcome. Welcome back. So we are continuing with the elements this week, um, continuing with water, with the, the fluid flowing motion of water. Um, and what I love about water is it's reminding us to become and remain adaptable no matter what life is bringing. So my life, I was just saying to Leighton, my husband's work has picked up, which means that I sort of get to pick up all the pieces and parts of whatever he usually does at home because his work is so demanding that he's gone for you know, 12, 14 hours at a time um, working. And so it, it becomes a lot like, okay, I've got to drive here and be there and do this and do that, all of these other pieces and parts. And it used to, it is always, not always, but often quite challenging for me um, because I like to do, you know, I like my own free time and I like sharing the workload. I don't like doing all the work. Um, but it used to always be this place of great resentment and resistance. So he would be away and I would just get cranky and mean and agitated. And what I've learned over time is that is not the kind of parent that I want to be, but also it's just not the way that I want to meet life. And so I have slowly, and I'm getting better at it over time, learned that I just have to adapt when this, uh, when life asks more of me, I need to change and be able to shift to meet it rather than trying to stay rigid and keep my plan exactly as it was. I have to let the plan shift, move, change, adapt. And when I do, there's a lot more peace in my life, <laughs> in my own life, in my children's life, in my family's life. When I don't, which of course, there are times when I get really rigid about it, then I feel agitated, then I feel angry, then I feel resentful and things don't go as easily. So this capacity to adapt to the situation, to the circumstances, is a watery kind of quality. So bringing more water, more flow into our life circumstances. Because if you think about it, water changes a lot depending on the circumstances. If it's cold, water turns to ice or snow room temperature, warm even, then we've got a fluid flowing water, we've got rivers and rain. If it gets too hot, then water will boil and turn to steam. So we have all these different conditions, these ways that water can adapt, and yet it's still water. It doesn't lose its waterness. You know, it's steam, it's in a different um, state, but it's still water. And that's what the yoga wants to teach us that we have all of these roles, all of these forms and functions that we take on in our lives. Even on the yoga mat, we take different shapes and forms. But deeper than that, we have a specific essence self. This essence self is unchanging. So you can take on form of daughter, you can take on form of caregiver, you can take on form of student or of teacher, and your essence remains the same. There's nothing that can shift or change that essence. So the process of yoga is in this invitation to adapt that form, shift it, change it, move it around through the poses, through the many layers of the self that get sort of broken up or um, uncrimped during the practice so that you can get more in touch with that essence that doesn't change. And by getting in touch with it, you can start to center your identity, your um, relationship to life from that place rather, th from, rather than from the outer roles, like I am a mother, I am a teacher, I am a wife, that those are some of the roles that I have. But more than that, I want to dip into the essence. I'm this unchanging essence. Because when we are connected with that essence, that's when we recognize, feel, and share peace, freedom, joy, love, those plate, those deepest feelings or, or qualities 
that reside in the heart. And so, of course, we do these forms because they're interesting and fun and, and they help our bodies feel great. But more than that, the guiding principle is to get us into this state of yoga, union with that essence self, the self. So we'll be adapting ourselves to try to meet ourselves as we practice this morning. You can start again with the good seat. Take the good seat, the asana. How do you sit this morning? Sit up well. Close your eyes and bring your attention inwards. Breathe in and all the way down to the seat where it meets the blanket or cushion. Feel the earth, quality of earth and the stability of your seat. But then just above where the seat is, in the lower regions of the body, below the navel and the pelvic bowl, lots of fluidity, lots of water quality there. So notice if you're clenching your stomach muscles and keep enough tone to keep yourself upright, but see if you can soften. When you breathe, as you inhale, let your belly expand and open. As you exhale, just soften. Let the breath move. Breath is also quite adaptable. Given the circumstances, your breath will adapt and change, bringing in the oxygen that you need at times or releasing oxygen, releasing carbon dioxide as needed. And then bring your awareness into that essence self. So there's a place along the way where you might notice the thoughts. There's a place along the way where you might notice deeper feelings, but drop in even more to the part of you that is unchanging. And I trust that when I say that, you know what I mean. Because you've all practiced, you've all been on the mat before. Because you're a human, you know that part even if you're not in touch with it very often. So listening into that deeper essence, bring your palms up and join them in front of your heart. Let's chant Om together three times and follow that with the Shiva invocation. Let it flow, let it move and breathe. Welcome, inhale. Oh, oh, oh. Panchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Teja Se Gently now bow your head to your heart and as you bow in, if you wish to form an intention, you may add that into your bowing. It's like honoring the deeper intentions of your own heart. And release your hands down onto your thighs. Lift your head slowly up and open your eyes. We'll start with cat and cow with the block again today. So you can grab your block and come to hands and knees. 
As always, if you have questions, feel free to unmute. But particularly with a smaller group, you, you it's, I have even more ability to respond. So feel free. As you're coming to hands and knees, take your block this way. So on medium height between the upper inner thighs. Got my sweater on for a minute longer. And then come down to hands and knees. Spread the fingers, curl the toes. So of course we're starting with the earthiness of the foundation and then move up into the wateriness of the pelvis and movement through the spine. Inhale and take the inner thighs back, arch your lower back and let that move like a ripple all the way up to your heart and your head looking up. And then it starts in the pelvis, scoop the tail, move like a wave through your spine as you exhale and look in towards your heart center. And then go back and forth, follow the breath and let the breath create this rippling movement through the spine. Can begin to create ujjayi breath. So even as you move, it's like hearing an ocean wave as it blows, as the breath blows through the body. Reminding us of our oceanic watery beginnings. Both as a species, or as life itself on this planet, and in our own selves. Our own bodies started in water. Now, if you wish to take this into any creative flowing variation, feel free to move your cat and cow in some other way if that feels good. Maybe you just want to stick with the regular or you know, shift around on the hands and legs. Let the hips shift off the center. It's good to bring the hips off the center sometimes. In yoga, we're often in this very linear position, but remember the hips are a ball and socket joint. They're a circle. So it's useful to be a little more fluid in the hip socket. Follow the impulse of the flow of the movement. Just for another breath or two. Ujjayi breath, helping to guide the flow. And then bring yourself back in towards the middle and take your block and set it out of your way. Walk your knees just a couple of inches back with your toes curled under and then hover your knees just up off the mat for a moment with the arms strong. The knees hover off the mat, push your hips way back and then send your hips up. So you send your weight more towards your feet and then slowly unfurl the legs to straighten them into downward facing dog. And then again, find some fluid, gentle motion in downward facing dog. Maybe you move towards plank and back out or maybe you know just bending one knee and the other. Connect with ujjayi breath. Notice the places that are tight and offer movements or breath as a way of adapting to that tightness. There's nothing to fix, right? There's nothing wrong, but we can be adaptable and work within the confines of the body to find more peace and more openness rather than more resistance and challenge. Now look up towards the top of the mat and make your way forward into standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Make sure your feet are parallel and fold over. Inhale and extend your heart towards the front. Exhale, flow like water, heart bows over. Two more times, just sweetly with the breath. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, flow like a waterfall over the legs. One more time. Inhale, heart forward. Keep your legs strong. And exhale, hover the heart. Float the heart down towards the thighs. Now push your feet down. Sweep your arms out wide and come all the way back up to standing. Return your palms to your heart center with your exhale. You all know the rotation of the thighs, so I'm not going to pause 
to really remedially teach you that. But that's where we're working today, again, with the internal rotation of the thighs and the tailbone scoop down. Before we go there, take your arms to the sides and up overhead, inhale. Take hold of your left wrist with your right hand and arc over to the right. So we find some space for flow and movement through the side waistline. Breathe deep. And then bend your knees and shift your hips even more towards the left. So we're kind of, don't often do this, but a little shift of the hips, like you're sticking uh, your hip out towards the car door. Yeah, like you're slamming the car door. So really let the hips shift off center. You might get really light on the right foot just for a moment or two and rock the body forward and back just a little bit. Just getting into angles on the hip that we don't often touch into. Come back to the center, hips back to the center, and then straighten the legs and rise up. Switch sides, take hold of the right wrist, arc over to the left, start with regular, you're just standing as we normally would. Arc over, breathe deep. Ah. Feel the space and the stretch in the side waistline. And now bend both knees. Notice that if the knees are knocking together, keep them wide. Bend both knees and shift your hips. It's like a little hula dance. They shift over towards the right side now. And then you can turn a little forward, turn a little back. Just kind of coaxing around that hip area. We don't often get to touch into. Good, come back to the center with the hips. Lift your torso back up and exhale. Let the arms float back down alongside your body. And we'll touch into that again in a little bit. Sweep the arms back up with your breath and exhale to fold over into Uttanasana. Inhale your heart forward. Step your left leg back and come into lunge. Welcome a full breath and drop into the deeper essence of yourself. So you're not up in your head, you're in your body and in your soul, your heart. And then with the lower the back knee and roll the back inner thigh up, draw your tail under. Bring your right hand on your right thigh and twist open to the right, drawing your waistline back and really bring attention to the space of the hips. So right at the tops of the thighs, widen and then draw your tail down. You can stay there or take your arm up or even over your ear, stay there or lift your back thigh if you're feeling that this morning. But remember if the back thigh lifts, the inner thigh lifts up and rolls wide. It's like rolling open and your body has to adapt to the challenge you give it. So if the hip lifts, push down more through the right leg. And now exhale, lower your back knee, lower your right hand, walk both hands over to the left side of the mat, go off the mat to about 11 o'clock. Lengthen through the side body and bring your forearms down if you'd like, or you can stay on the hands. It's actually really good work to do this on the hands if you'd like, walking your hands forward. The deep breath open. Soften a little in the skin and the jaw. And then with the legs firm, roll the inner thighs wider apart to scoop the tail down more. Push into both feet. Soften. One of the things that yoga helps us do is remove the um, unconscious adapting we've been doing, which is like, habits of just holding patterns that are not so helpful. Conscious adaptation, really great. Unconscious, not so much. Walk your hands back around. It just means like, oh, I've been clenching my jaw all week and I didn't know it, right? That's an unconscious adaptation. <laughs> Lift your back knee, step forward into standing forward then. And so we come to yoga to help relieve some of those things so that we can get more in touch with the deepest parts. Inhale, flow your heart forward, that essence. Exhale, step your right foot back into lunge. Breathe. Soften the outside so that the inside can become easier to connect with, right? The deeper essence. So if there's a complaining mind, yeah, that's interesting, I guess. 
but just don't listen so much. Listen for something more. Lower the back knee, scissoring the legs. Take your right inner thigh wide, left hand, left thigh, twist towards the left. Welcome your sweet, even breath, ujjayi breath, shoulders back. And again, take the arm up, go over the ear or stay up, whichever feels nice to you this morning. And even lift the back thigh if it's available. The back thigh will tend to get pulled down by gravity. You really resist that by lifting it up and let the front thigh descend more. Heart sweeps open. Then lower your hand, lower your back knee, and walk both hands over to the right side of the mat. You're going off to about hmm, two o'clock. And bring your forearms down. Charge up the legs. Enough earth in the legs to hold you steady, but then water. Roll the inner thighs back in wide. Scoop your tailbone under on the left side and push into both legs. Let your spine now ripple outward. So it elongates, soften your teeth, soften your lips. These places that get clenched that don't need to be, they block our connection with our innate joy. So let's adapt. Walk your hands back around and frame your front foot and step forward again into standing forward bend. Uttanasana, float the heart forward, inhale, and exhale, roll back in, dive back into the heart space. Take your arms wide, reach all the way up, and then exhale, bring your palms together in front of your heart. We'll take it into our water salutation in just a moment, but let's inhale, reach up again. Clasp the left hand, we'll arc over towards the right. Again, looking for the space and adaptivity, adaptability, excuse me, in the hips section and the side ribs. Bend your knees and keep the knees wide so they don't knock in. Shift the hip like a hula dance. It's really a shift over or a belly dance or a traditional Indian dance over towards the left side. And then can, again, you can do a little twisting of the body, bringing the hip a little forward and the hip a little bit back. Almost like you're a little plant in the stream being tossed by the current. Not going to places that are actually in pain, but just into places for a little stretch. Come back to the center, align the hips and straighten your torso, switch sides. Clasp the right wrist, arc to the left, start standing. Then bend the knees, and again, like a little hula, the traditional Indian dance, really slide the hip over and a little bit up. Lean towards, lean, lean the weight into the right foot. Then a little bit over towards the front and towards the back. These are really nice. It's actually great if you can stay for 30 seconds or a minute or two in these, but we won't do that in practice today. Come back to the center, shift the hips back, lift the arms back up and stretch all the way up. Exhale, bow forward and touch the mat. Water salutation, inhale, reach your heart forward, flow it out. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Keeping the arms strong now, ripple like a wave through your spine. Now, if it bothers your spine, just come forward into plank. Otherwise, scoop your tail round your spine and ripple forward into plank. Remember that hovering of the knees we did a moment ago. Bend your knees, hover them just above the mat and shift your weight way back towards like a crouching dog and then float the hips up again to downward facing dog. We'll do that two more times. Scoop the tail, ripple through the spine towards plank, hover the knees, shift back. Should start to feel like a wave, go up downward facing dog. Scoop the tail, round through the spine, all the way out to plank. Bend the knees, shift back, downward facing dog. Oops, okay, so one more time. Ripple through the spine towards plank. And this time exhale and lower all the way down to your belly. 
Let's take the hands behind, interlace the fingers, lift your shoulders and inhale, hover up into Shalabhasana just for a moment and exhale, float back down, flow back down like a wave rising up. Again, inhale, hover up, heart lifts, exhale, roll back down through the spine. Legs really strong here. One more time, inhale, hover up and exhale, lower. Bring your hands under your shoulders, curl your toes, go to downward facing dog. Reach up and back. Then look forward towards your hands, bend your knees and step or hop yourself forward into standing forward bend. Float the heart out. Exhale, dive in, back into deeper essence. Arms wide, rise up to standing. Exhale, bring your palms to your heart center. And again, inhale, lift. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, jump or step, downward facing dog. Three rounds through that ripple. On the third one, we'll come down. So ripple forward plank, go back, downward facing dog through the bent knees. Two more times, forward and back. Like a wave, this time come forward and all the way down to the belly. Exhale, lower. <clears throat> this time cobra, hands as wide as uh, the outer shoulders, curl up like, like a wave rising, crashing up, and then exhale, flow back down through the spine. So actually articulate through the vertebrae to get this rippling quality. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, ripple down. One more time. Inhale, curl up like water. Exhale, ripple back down and go back, downward facing dog. <clears throat> Legs steady and strong, arms strong. And then look forward again and step or hop yourself forward into standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Inhale, the heart goes forward, exhale. Dive into the heart space and then arms wide, come back up standing. Palms together in front of your heart. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale and flow down. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees or jump or step, your choice. Ripple forward. And exhale, back downward facing dog. Two more times. Roll through the body like a wave. One more time, nice y'all. So this is a different way to work in the spine. Come all the way down to the belly and then three back bends of your choice with that wave-like quality. Head last, legs really strong, exhaling down. So you can feel it's building some heat, hopefully a little bit. Asking something different of the body, a little different way to move than we often do. And that's useful, it's adaptable. Shift back down dog after you've done your um, <clears throat> back bends. It's adaptable to be able to move in these different ways, not just one single way, right? It gives us lots of options. And that's really all we need. We don't need to have to be able to do everything perfect, but we do need to be able to have a range of options, not just one. So now take your right foot, step it forward like a lunge between your hands. I'm sorry, this transition is not making sense to me, but it's fine. Spin your toes all the way around towards the front of the, uh, towards the long edge of the mat, both sets of toes, hands to your hips and inhale, come up. We could have done that in a different way. <laughs> okay, so let's take what um, I've heard called horse stance. So walk your feet in a little closer. They're just a little bit wider than your shoulders. My shoulders are here, my feet are a little wider. And continuing to work the shins hugging in and the tops of the thighs rolling back and wide. So bend your knees just a little bit with your hands on your hips. Good, knees are bent just a little. And now lean forward, send the hips back, bend the knees deeper and roll the inner thighs back. You can bring your hands now 
forearms onto your thighs. So you can think of like as if you were gonna, you know, there's a ginormous horse underneath of you that you are riding. You can see how this could be called horse stance. So the inner thighs roll way back. Draw your tail slightly down and lift up your low belly. Just let yourself sit deep. Notice how the tops of the thigh bones, yes, yeah, settle in. Now notice also, don't put you know, your whole body weight into your arms. Hold your, your body up without completely collapsing here. Try sitting back more towards your heels. Notice what happens. Good, and then push down into the legs and inhale, stretch up. You can even take the arms all the way up. Same idea in wider stance. Now bring your hands down to your hips. Walk your feet out wider as if we do our standing poses. So adaptability, we want to be able to reach into these poses from different angles. So again, make sure your feet are parallel, big deep breath, and then bend both knees as if you now had like a mega horse that you were sitting on. And you can use your, your forearms on your thighs, you can use your hands on your thighs. I'm, I'm finding that my hands are making it super easy for me to cheat. So I'm gonna come down to forearms instead. Yeah, scissor the shins in, take both inner thighs way back and out at the sides. So that super flowy quality of the inner thighs moving back like a ripple, continuously moving back. Now lower hands to the mat. You can keep the legs bent for a moment. Mm -hmm. Extend the spine and slowly, slowly straighten your legs bow forward to come into Prasarta Padottanasana. But consider that you're actually um, doing that by rolling the inner thighs in, back, wide. I know we do this pose often, but if we can approach it in this way, sometimes we'll get a little different experience of it. Hug the shins in, empower the tops of the inner thighs to roll back and to go out towards the sides. Now, slightly scoop your buttocks flesh down. So like that buttocks flesh anchors down the back of the leg, down towards the inner heel and outer heel. from your pelvis root into the floor and that may then help you extend your spine, lengthen the side ribs, hug your shoulder blades on the back of the heart. Life asks a lot from us. Being adaptable means we can meet the circumstances without losing who we are, the deep essence of who we are. Good, come back to your fingertips. Extend your spine out parallel to the floor now. And then turn your right foot towards the front of the mat. Bend your right knee. Let's just come right up into warrior two. We don't need to make a whole big deal about it. Excellent. Take a deep breath in and out. All right, with the feet steady and strong, draw up through the legs so they're holding you. Lean a little in towards the middle as the inner thighs again move back. And then lift your right front hip point off the right leg. You scoop the right hip under. See if you can bring your front shin more over your front knee. That's it. Good, look out over fingertips, Virabhadrasana too. And from the pelvis, extend into the earth. Like you're reaching down through water to find the bottom of the ocean. Good. Bring your back hand to your hip, take your right hand to the floor to come down to triangle pose, Trikonasana. Feel free to add the block as you need to, good. And with a breath, connect, connect inwards. Soften the outer shell. Inner thighs move back and wide and really widen. So from the inner edge of your left big toe, pull back towards your left inner heel. And notice how that helps you widen the top of your left inner thigh. 
keep that ripe, wrap your right seat under, then extend out. Trikonasana, you can take that top arm up if you'd like, or not. Notice where the body is compensating, like what the body's trying to do to make it easier that's actually not helpful, if it is. And then we adapt instead, which is doing the things that are actually helpful. So if the knee is locking, unlock it. If it's bending, make it straight. The spine is sort of tipped in one direction, extend it long and completely out. Beautiful. Exhale your left hand down to the mat now. Step your left foot in a few inches and out to the left and make both legs straight. Parjvotanasana, pyramid pose. So here's a place where the body will try to um, compensate and not skillfully adapt by taking the right hip out to the right. So don't let the right hip swing right. Hug the right hip in. That's the way we adapt for the compensation. And then from the feet, charge up through both legs. Roll the top of the left inner thigh in, back, and wide. And if your right hand can come free, take your right hand under your right leg from the outside. Hold on to your right upper inner thigh and roll it. So I'm going underneath, yeah, and then roll it out to the right. Use your right hip to resist that a little bit and you'll find, oh my gosh, that opens my hamstring. For me, it's getting in the outer part of the hamstring, which I can't always get to might be different for you. And root down through the leg into the floor, then release your hand and bow over for the last couple of breaths if that's available. Notice how the breath adapts and sometimes it's not skillful, we start to hold the breath. So become conscious even there, let the breath move. If you can't do it without holding your breath, then back off a little or a lot. Good, now inhale and reach your heart towards the front of the mat. Bend your front knee, step back to, to plank pose if you wanna go through a vinyasa. And you can make it that watery flowy kind if you'd like, or step back to downward facing dog and rest there or in child's pose. Welcome a full breath in and out when you get to downward facing dog. And with your exhale, release those things that get in the way, right? That crimp the layers of the body, the mind, and block our connection to joy. Okay, so we're gonna take the second side of that whole series. This time you can step your left foot forward in between the hands. Turn the toes towards the short edge of the mat and inhale to come up. If you'd rather face the other way so that you can see, that's totally fine. Again, come back to horse stance. So hands, uh, sorry, feet just a little bit wider than the shoulders. You know, bend the knee, uh, sweep the feet in towards each other, excuse me, and then bend the knees and bring your elbows down. I'm not putting a lot of weight on my elbows. Yeah. And the tendency will be to tip forward because that'll take it out of your hamstrings and glutes, like to have your weight more in the front of your feet. So just start to shift your weight more back into your feet. Yeah, good. Tops of the thighs wide. Lift your low belly slightly like a little cough. There's tone. <laughs> that little bit of tone gives a lot of support. Stretch the legs, take the arms up overhead, inhale. And then exhale, walk the feet out wider. And take the arms out wide as well. Big breath in, bend your knees. So now it's like a giant horse, water horse that we're riding. <laughs> yeah, knees bent, tops of the thighs wide, even as the shins hug in a little. And you can bring your hands onto your thighs or your forearms on your thighs. Again, I find that my hands let me cheat more. Squeeze the shins towards each other. Tops of the thighs back, bring your torso more parallel to the floor if it's available to you. 
Yeah, now bring your hands on the floor, look forward. Knees stay bent, hands on the floor, look forward. Press your knees wide. Yes, keep looking forward as you slowly stretch the legs by taking the tops of the thighs wide. Good, then allow the spine to cascade over, prasartapadottanasana. You may notice the difference. The right hamstring being more open than the left, having done that stretch, feels very different to me than it did on the first side. See how it goes for you. Lengthen through the sides of your rib cage now and hug the bottom tips of your shoulder blades into the base of your heart. But then as you push down through the buttocks, down to the back of the legs, down into the heel, let your spine cascade over and even broaden your collarbones a little. Prasarta. Good, pulls for getting into the legs. Come back up on fingertips. Inhale, heart forward. Turn your left toes out. Set up your right foot, heel and arch alignment, and then cartwheel up into warrior two. Take a deep breath. Now everybody peek at the front of your right hip here. And notice as you look down the right leg, if the front of the right hip, the top of the thigh bone really, is forward of your ankle. Pull back from your right big toe toward your right heel and pull the top of the thigh bone back in line with your ankle bone. Then lift your left hip point off the left hip and sit down deeper. So you're not squishing. There you go. Shin perpendicular to the floor. Knee over the ankle. And look out, Virabhadrasana two. So it's tricky because, you know, we're holding a pose. We're staying in these poses and you all have enough practice to stay longer than sometimes we do. So we need to connect at the same time with flow and adaptability. And that can just be in the breath, but it can also be in the aliveness in the pose so you're not just kind of dead weight hanging there. Draw your tail down, lift your belly. Good, bring your right hand to your hip, bring your left hand to the floor, straighten both legs for triangle pose, trikonasana. Engage the leg muscles around your bones like holding them, holding to the earthiness of the body, but then roll inner thighs back. Wrap your left seat under you and your left kneecap forward. Unfurl, top arm up. Mm. There's always this scissoring in of the body, this connecting back inwards through the limbs, but then also reach out. That's how we start to crack our limitations, not just continuing to draw in, but also stretching out. We want the essence part of ourselves to not just be for ourselves, but to extend beyond, beyond the boundaries of who we are out into the world. So we bring more consciousness to the world because it desperately needs it, as we can see every day. Exhale, bring your hand down to the mat. Step your right foot a little bit off to the right and then forward so your feet land three to three and a half feet apart. I often bend my front knee to shift my hips to really bring the hips so that they are as square as possible towards the front of the mat. May or may not go all the way there, that's fine. With the feet pressing down, scissor them towards each other and then connect with the back leg first, the back inner thigh rolling way out to the right. Take your left hand un from the outside underneath your left leg, grab the left inner thigh and pull it wide out to the left. That actually invites your right thigh to go more right in, in adaptation. So whatever the conditions bring, we don't have to control them. We can adapt to them. Totally different experience than I gotta control this, make this happen in a particular way. You can release your leg and bow over. If you can trust that you can adapt without losing yourself, then you're really working in a skillful and conscious way in the life. 
Notice your breath. Good, look forward, lunge forward and step through vinyasa if you'd like or go to down dog or go to child's pose. Check in with what feels like an adaptation that would support you in this moment. Man, that opened my hips for real. That was awesome. Okay. So in downward facing dog, I'd love for you to imagine the number four. <laughs> this is the way I taught this the other day and it really worked. So imagine the number four now. Um, actually, if you would consider yourself to have tight hips, you might put your blocks kind of close to your feet. Um, yeah, okay, you're in good shape. Okay, so imagining the number four, take your right leg up in three leg dog. Notice the freedom having done those other stretches. Now bend your right knee in towards your nose, but don't, don't come forward to plank. And take your right outer ankle above your left knee. Take your right knee out to the right. Make a number four. I think we did it. All right, now bend your knees. No, bend your left knee and send your buns way up. So just push back with your hands. Your buns go up more. Left knee's a little bent. Resist the urge to lift either hip higher or drop either hip lower and slowly walk your hands. Keep your left knee bent back towards your left foot. Let your left heel come to the mat. Hands back towards your left foot. So this might be a great time to put your hands on blocks if you need to. Otherwise, knee bent. Remember that horse stance we just had. Shift some weight back towards your heel. Remembering the horse stance we just had, bring your hands to your heart, lift your torso up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we're playing with balance, good. Adding some strength, see if you can straighten your leg and make continue making that number four shape with the leg. Good work. And then lift your right leg off Set your right foot down on the mat beside the left. Inhale, sweep both arms up, just a little breather. And exhale, arms can come back down. Hover your right foot off the mat. Take your right hand to your right um, pinky toe or big toe or hold your knee. Open the knee to the right and slowly open your leg out to the right. We're just going out to the side this time, not anywhere else. If you have your balance, you feel steady, you can take your left arm out to the left. Adapting, you can feel the left foot making it its adaptations. Root down to rise up. Now we'll go back to where we came from. Left hand on hip, see if you can put your right foot back into that number four position. Bend the right knee, palms can come to your heart. Sorry, bend the left knee. Hands to the floor. If you wanna stop along the way in a hand balance, hook your foot around, come up into flying pigeon. That's just an option. Or walk yourself all the way back out. Or and, how about that? Walk yourself all the way back out to that downward facing dog with the leg crossed and then release your right leg beside your left and pause. I'm enjoying having my knees bent. You might try that to add some fluidity or straighten the legs to add more stability. Let's try the second side, leg strong. Inhale your left leg up, three leg dog. Bring your left knee under your nose. Don't have to curl and then make like a number four. Left outer ankle above your right knee. Bend your right knee, your heel will be up at start and then slowly, slowly walk your hands back towards your right foot. Set the hips down. Yeah, so first you're just bowing forward, hands can be on blocks. Good, now squeeze the legs and notice if you've compensated or adapted in a not skillful way by dropping the left hip. See if you can level out. Then lifting your torso, bring your hands to your heart so you're like in chair pose for a moment. Yes, good, lift your gaze. Slowly stretch the legs, take your time. So we're building this foundational support in the glute on the right leg as you can feel. 
Stretch all the way up to standing. And then place your left foot down, little breather. Root down to the legs, inhale, lift the arms, look up. And exhale, palms back down, hands back down. Shift your weight onto your right leg, hover your left leg up. Either hold the pinky toe or the big toe, use a strap if you'd like even, and slowly take the leg out to the left. Roll both inner thighs in and then scoop the tail and unfurl. Right arm can go out to the right if you have the space. Good, bend the left knee, draw it back in into that number four position. Hands come to the heart, bend your knees, sit down, sit back, walk the hands to the floor and either just walk all the way out to down dog or pause along the way for a moment in flying pigeon or something approaching flying pigeon. And then once you've gotten out to downward facing dog, unwind your foot, settle back in to downward facing dog, take a breath. Notice how your body is and feels. And then if you're feeling it, go through vinyasa. If not, hover in down dog or even in child's pose. Might feel nice to ripple the spine through these motions nicely then. Nice and controlled. And then once again, step your right foot forward in between the hands. And again, turn all 10 toes towards the long edge of the mat. This time you can stay up on fingertips and keep the legs wide. Squeeze the shins in, take the tops of your thighs and widen them out. And as you bend now your um, right knee, let me see if I can do this with you. I'll go to the left. You can slightly turn your left, your right foot out, walk over towards the right. Let your toes come off on the left side for like a skandhasana variation. Yeah. I know it's kind of a funky one. I'm not great at this one. I really use my hands for a lot of support, but it is possible to take the hands off. Um, not very possible for me usually, but yeah, there we go. Good, squeeze the legs, bring your hands back down, lift up and switch sides. Now I like to stay pretty low, keeping the knees pretty bent. Left toes can turn out slightly. Right heels down, right toes up. Inner legs getting some attention here. Inner thighs in, yeah, maybe lift the hands, maybe not. Depends on what your body's feeling this morning. Go back again to the first side. Reach over. Something to watch out for is if you can hyperextend, not letting the knee just totally collapse to the floor. And then come back again over to the second side. Let the hips sit down. You got one leg malasana. Come back into the center. Point all 10 toes straight ahead, take a deep breath. And then just slowly walk your feet in towards each other. Power up the legs, scoop the buttocks towards the heels as you bow over in Uttanasana, just pause. Pause and feel for that rippling, a living, adaptable quality of life force that's opening up the blockages to your true self. Reach in and connect with the essence of you. 
Inhale now, stretch your heart forward. And you're gonna come down to Vajrasana. Now you can do this, um, you can turn back towards the short edge of the mat if that makes more sense to you. I'm gonna stay facing you. So for Vajrasana, um, you're sitting on your toes. Yeah, so toes are tucked under. Do your best to spread your toes out. Maybe that, you know, ring toe, pinky toe don't quite get to the floor, but if they can, if they're long enough, that's really good for them. And then you just sit and breathe for a sec. Feet don't often get quite this intensity of work, so it's super useful. See if you can bring your torso back more just tempering, tempering for what you need. Excellent, reach forward now, come off of the legs, just take a little circle of your ankles, whatever way makes sense to you. And then this time sit back on the heels with the toes down, the toes back. Again, if it's hard on the knee, you can sit in a different way, but we're gonna just lift the hips, shift them off, to the right, the legs stay where they are. Reach this left hand up and then lift the right arm up and arc over to the left. So again, we're getting into this long side body area. Yeah. Notice if your shoulders come forward. Yeah, good. Imagine that fluidity is making its way through the side of the body and the low back space. Sometimes when we work with the legs in this way, low back gets a little overworked. So this is a way to get in there and help it open up. Release your arm back down, come up in the center and then switch. So this hips just shift a little bit over to the left. Reach right arm to the right, inhale up and arc over in the other way. So it may be that you have not a lot of arc, that's all right. Yeah, so it's not about like, can I touch the floor? We actually wanna just think length, think a lot of length. Um, notice if the left front shoulder area has collapsed, hollow it out. And staying long, you can look up under your uh, left armpit. And slowly bring this arm back up and shift back into the center. <clears throat> Come to a seated position. So you may want your stuff. <laughs> Actually, do bring a block close by and bring a strap close by in case you need it. Block handy with a couple of, actually most of the rest of the practice is on the mat, on the seated or, or, or more. So coming deeper into the legs and hips to find that fluidity, fluidity, good grief. <laughs> okay, so keeping your left leg in like a cross leg position, bring your right leg up into Hindalasana baby cradle, or um, yes, baby cradle. You can start with the leg coming in and out, and bend it back, open the knee, wrap around, and up you go, baby cradle. As you've noticed, we've had this, um, you know, 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle in the hip already a few times. It's gonna continue with us a few times more. Imagine the shin moving towards your chest, the thigh moving forward away from you. And just add your breath wherever it feels like there is a hindrance, a blockage to this position, which we can say is not a natural position unless you're about, you know, four months old maybe, but as grown-ups, not so much. So it's all right if there are blockages, we're not trying to fix, we're not trying to say there's something wrong. I'm saying, how can I be adaptable to this? Good, and release the right side, switch to the left. So the right leg comes into like a 
cross-legged position. Bring the left leg up. And again, you can start with moving in and out of the hip. And of course, sitting up on the blanket is going to help your low back stay in and up more. And then bring the leg back and wrap around. I always, the options are to have the leg lower. You can do this in a cross leg position and just bow forward. And that will give you similar stretch if this is too much right now. To welcome the breath, sit up tall. Imagine the shin moves towards the chest as the top of the thigh presses away. And that's really the spinning of the inner thigh. So you can even try taking the left hand to the left inner thigh, widening it out, see what happens. And left hand can come back up. A little rocking. Gives you that adaptable sensation. Okay, I can meet what comes. Good, and release this leg as well. Now take your feet and join them together and I'll give you options. So if Baddha Konasana, this, so this is Baddha Konasana. If this is a challenge, please stay here. If you wanna add more challenge, if your hips are pretty open, you can take your block between your feet and you've got options. You can be, you know, the thin, the medium, or the very wide, wide option of the block between the feet. And the other option is to move the feet a little further away, and that's actually called omega pose. So one, any of those is fine. If you're holding the block, you just kind of wrap your toes around the end of it, like fingers, and then take a moment to internally rotate the thigh, really roll it down towards the mat. It's an adaptation that helps us to stay grounded. Push the fingertips down and sit up tall. Yes, broad shoulders. And then exhale and come forward. So if you're using the block, it may be that your forehead rests on the block. Um, if you're not using the block, maybe that your forehead is up in space, and that's fine too. Roll both in, or, uh, sorry, let's try this. Push the feet into the block or into each other. And roll your inner thighs towards the mat as if the buttocks were gonna go out behind you, but then slide your buttock flesh down. So we're not uprooting to be in this position. We're actually deeply rooted and creating opening or um, experiencing some opening. Then push back out through both legs. Lengthen through the rib cage. And though this is a very simple looking pose, let yourself dive into the nuance and the subtlety of it. Notice where you are compensating in some way, clenching the jaw, the shoulders, holding back. And instead, be skillful, be adaptable, meet what's right before you. Next inhale, lengthen through your spine and slowly come back up. Oof. Support your legs, bring them back in. Okay. So you're gonna take your block again. I think, I think everybody has a good block that will work. You're gonna take it of this height. So I would call this the medium height. And you're gonna sit on it. And everybody's booty is just a little bit different, but your, your sitting bones are sort of framing this block. They may or may not totally frame it. And it's gonna be slightly wonky, uncomfortable. Like it's not meant to feel great. Sorry. <laughs> and you can have your strap close. So here's the block. My blanket went away. I'm gonna pop up on the block. With my sitting bones are actually kind of perfectly carved around the block and it doesn't feel great. <laughs> I love that advertisement. All right, so from there, I'm gonna take the right leg straight out, the left leg bent. So for Marichyasana, 
you did this last week without the block, this week we're just adding the block to add a little more sensation and awareness and it actually invites the whole body to participate in a new way. So again, with the legs squeezing in, roll the inner thighs towards the mat and see if you can get low back in and up. Then take your right hand to the right, lean a little right and take your left arm up and over. There we go. So we're not knocking off the block. We're just kind of leaning to get the side body. Now lean over on the diagonal out towards the right pinky toe or past it, and then walk yourself around. And this is a good time to add a strap if you need to, or bring your left hand to your right foot or your right shin, whatever it means. Take a breath and bow forward. For me, that relieves some of the tension on the block. But this lift of the block and the engagement that's required can actually help really support your back in these forward bends. It's something different. Legs strong, extend through the spine, lift your elbows, soften your heart. Inhale and slowly come back up. Take your left leg out. Bring your right leg back. Good, so the right foot, you know, it's coming back. It may be able to come back pretty far and even, I didn't say this before, but the inner ankle may be able to touch the block. I'm not quite there. And the heel can be up. If it's really far back, the heel can be up. Then left hand goes a little out to the left. Inhale your right arm up. And I can feel myself compensating by actually leaning right. You can see it in my rib cage. So I actually want to just lean left. Really arc left. There we go. Then look towards the floor. Turn your torso. Reach out past the left pinky toe. Yeah. Then walk yourself around and bow over the left leg. If the right heel is way back or the right foot is way back, press the right foot in towards the block. Press your right leg in towards your torso. Leg muscles firm, roll the inner thighs towards the block, towards the floor. You can feel how this asks something different of your body than when you're just sitting on the floor. Like there's more connection, there's more integration, there's more adaptation happening. You wanna have the ability to adapt to the circumstances even if they're weird as this one is. Inhale, slowly come back up again. <laughs> kind of funky. Take the right leg out. Bend the left leg back again. So we're still here. This time open, uh, I'm gonna need my other block or something. You're gonna open your left knee and bring your left foot almost like underneath your right leg. So it's almost like the number four that we had before. I actually that works. Yeah, there we go. And it's really close in black, back to the block. Sit up tall. And again, take the right arm to the right, lean a little right. And then turn the belly towards the right, reach out past the right pinky toe. You're standing on the diagonal and then walk yourself around. This is like Janu Shirshasana. So your left hand can end up holding the right foot or the right pinky toe and bow over. If you're bowed and you're just like easily catching your leg, then your left cheek goes to the outer right shin. So yeah, so that's not, yeah, it may be Gretchen. So it's option, right? Like if you're, if this is, and you're always all the way laid out, great. If not, don't worry about it, just bow. Squeezing the leg muscles firm. Stretch out to the bones, lift the armpits and hollow the heart, soften the heart, excuse me. And then if you place your left fingertips to the floor, inhale and come up. Bring your left leg out, stretch it out. Bring the right leg back, tuck it under. So it's making that number four position. It's just really close to the block, right knee wide. But notice if your hips turned, for this version, we want the hips more square, more forward. Again, walk your right hand, sorry, left hand over to the left. Take your right arm up, inhale. 
big adaptability, lots of space through the body to meet whatever the circumstance is, and then turn and reach out past the pinky toe. So I'm not going for the floor, I'm just reaching on this nice long diagonal. Then, yeah, walk yourself over, right hand lands on the left foot, it can be on the inside or the outside. Walk your left hand forward, feel free. You can be in line with the shin and bow over. Again, if you're easily out on the leg and you're, you know, your head is touching your knee or something beyond your knee, then the right cheek goes to the left shin, outer shin. That's more of the classical expression of the pose is maybe how I want to say it. Lift the armpits, soften the heart. Don't let the left kneecap sag though. Left leg has to stay really engaged for this. And inhale and again, slowly, slowly, come on back up. Whew, come off of your block. <sighs> that feels heavenly to come off the block. Okay, come back around to downward facing dog and we'll see how this may have impacted first the down dog and then where we go from here. Notice if there's any recognizable change or adaptation that the body made. Notice if there's greater ease in your mind and your heart as well. And now come forward, right leg into pigeon. Don't go into the fullest first, press the right pinky toe down. Up, scissor the legs and reach the inner thighs back. Left inner hip to the left. Then settle the right sitting bone towards the mat. And it may go further being a little deeper in the practice than usual and bring your forearms down. And we just pause, we just stay in pigeon for a moment, really let it settle in. But the places that are braced and contracted without purpose, let them soften. For me, that's often my jaw. For you, it might be shoulders or eyes. And then do consciously contract and engage the muscles that need that. Keep rolling the left inner thigh to the left, up and to the left, and descend the right hip more. We release the habits that are no longer serving, clenching, bracing, resisting life as it comes to us so that we can be more fluid and adaptable. We can flow with what comes without losing center. Breathe into the deepest part of you. This practice wants to introduce you intimately to that deepest part, so intimately that you never lose it, you never forget. Good, slowly walk your hands back. Go back to downward facing dog. Shift around a little bit if that would be a good idea for your body right now. Stay fluid. And then bring your left leg forward into pigeon. Pinky toe down. Right knee down, pause. Welcome your breath. Feel the groundedness that's happening in the body. 
And then lifting the back thigh, roll it to the right, right hip to the right. And then anchor the left outer hip crease down to the floor. Yeah. Engage your belly as you bow forward uh, into Ekapada Rajakaputasana. Pigeon. We do it all again, this side hopefully informed by the first side. Life will give us circumstances to learn from over and over and over again, similar things. So again, notice, where are you compensating, contracting in a way that's not skillful, not purposeful? What part is not participating that needs to? The inner leg, the outer hip, core muscles. Even in the challenge, even in the strong sensation, dive into the self, dive into the heart. Be anchored in peace even as you encounter sensation and challenge. Because peace is who you are. Good, walk your hands back. Step back, downward facing dog. Bend and straighten the legs. And then take a seat one more time. So again, option to sit up on a blanket. Before we come to our back. So Y'all have been with me long enough and you have strong enough practice that the option is to take us into either fire log pose, Agni Stambhasana, which is what we prepped for, or to take it further and to come to um, Padmasana, Lotus pose. Lotus, yes. I'm not going to demo Lotus. That's not a good idea for me, but for Lotus, uh, let's see, for both, we'll start with the left leg. So the left leg comes under. If you're going to Agni Stambhasana, left shin is parallel to the front of the mat. And then you roll the inner thigh in. If you were attempting Lotus, it just slides up the leg and that's the knee that doesn't wanna go. So I'm not gonna go there. So, but it slides up and the foot lands right up here. Then the right leg comes up, turn it out. And again, slide the ankle bone to the outer knee. I think everybody's doing this one, so there we are. Yeah, good. Agni Sambhasana, sit up tall. Roll both inner legs, inner thighs towards the mat as your low back moves in and up. Notice as a, that is a quality of being more adaptable to this now kind of challenging form, but hopefully one you're ready for. And breathe, set the sitting bones down it in the essence like even if it's like you're on fire this is fire log pose sit in the essence of it of yourself you have the choice stay upright or bow forward option hands to the feet and press the feet into the hands or taking the arms forward even more trying to lift the sides of the rib cage out and really walk the hands beyond as you bow. 
Breathe into the place that has the most challenge in this moment. And soften the compensations, the place that doesn't need you. Inhale, walk your hands back, release your feet and slowly come up and then switch the cross of the shins. So right leg comes under, roll the inner right thigh towards the mat, right shin as parallel to the front of the mat as you can get it. And then left foot up, you can do that baby cradle action if you like it to get into it, outer knee to the, uh, sorry, outer ankle to the outer knee and set it down now. Now your knee might be up off the front ankle, that's fine. You just don't want it like super duper high. I can't quite see, so we'll do our best. Internally rotate your thighs with your fingertips on the floor and just sit in stillness for a moment. Let the sitting bones drop down. And in that stillness, it's easier to connect with the essence self. And then from the stillness with a breath, lift your ribs more and then come forward either hands to the feet or hands walk out beyond. I can often notice, you know, how I've been working in my ribs by where my ribs land on this, on my legs. Sometimes they land pretty crunched up. And so it takes some breath and some attention to lengthen the space of the rib cage here, even though the, the attention seems to be only in the hips. So notice what's happening for you. Soften any compensating, engage what needs to be engaged. So we want to adapt, we want to adapt really well with attention, with love, kindness, peace, freedom, joy, not just cranky habits. Good, pushing the feet into the hands or slowly walk your hands back and then Lift up through your spine, inhale, excellent. Release the legs, come down on your back. When you get to your back, just breathe in and out. Let Ujjayi breath come along. We didn't really pause in child's pose today, so pause here, bring your hands to your belly. Soften even more. And then I've been liking this as kind of a watery movement. Let the arms go straight up towards the sky. Hover the legs up towards the sky and then everything can soften a bit and bend. And just move your arm and the arm socket, the leg and the leg socket, almost like seaweed on the bottom of the ocean or a river plant in the stream. Let yourself move around. Again, finding adaptable fluidity. And the arms and the legs and the spine and the joints, maybe even rock your body side to side if it feels nice. And then very gently bring the legs in, either hug your knees in or go into happy baby. There may be a bit more range in happy baby today since we've been in the legs and hips. Now, as this feels finished, Slowly release your legs. Lengthen them out along the mat. Soften and release your arms as well. Bring them down alongside you. 
imagine the mat is like a raft. You get to just float for Shavasana. That image is not too weird for you. So yeah, take your time. Set up for Shavasana really well. And then once you are settled, surrender. Even in Shavasana, we can have compensations and contractions that are not necessary. Allow those contractions to release. Allow the compensations to let go, to dissipate. Surrender even more into the light of the essence. Surrender into the heart. And rest there for Shavasana.
Allow the breath to flow easily in and out through the body. And bring consciousness down to the fingers and toes as you move them to let them awaken. Gently start to stretch in the way that feels good. And bend your knees, roll to the right side, and pause. Press down and slowly come back up to you seated. Close your eyes once more. Sit well, but in a way that allows for the flow of life force to be unimpeded. So not so rigid. Be open to the quality of water that may teach us how to be adaptable and fluid, no matter what life brings, so that we can remain deeply seated in our own hearts. May we be beacons of the freedom, peace, joy, and unconditional love that reside there for those around us and for the world. Bring your palms together in front of you. Let's close with an ohm. Welcome your in breath. Oh. Namaste. Thank you all so much.